Yeah. It's It's like an antihistamine. Well, my eyes are itchy, so I think it's an allergy, not a cold. Yesterday was miserable. (laughs) Good evening, and welcome to the March 5th Town Council meeting. Councillor Latina, would you lead us in the Pledge of the Flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Rochina? Here. Councillor Lesser is out of town on business. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Warren Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, May I have a motion to add to the executive session personnel matters? (coughs) So moved. moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any objections? Anybody abstaining? Okay, the motion passes. Is this all right? Um, our, our first order of business tonight is a proclamation for 2018 Girl Scout Week. And we have Troop 10207 here. If they would like to come up and join me at the podium, they can introduce themselves and then I'll read the proclamation. I'm Carly Duraco, and um, Girl Scouts. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Everybody go ahead. Everybody say your name first. Go ahead. Oh. I'm Emily McNeese. Hi, I'm Emily Parada. I'm Nora Magel. I'm uh, one of the co-leaders, Eileen Washburn. Our other co-leader is um, Gina Chamberlain. And we also have our um, service unit, our new service unit um, manager here, Jennifer Moore. Um, and the girls um, wrote down some of the favorite things that they've learned or done as Girl Scouts. They're not all here, but the, these girls are going to read it. Um, Want to do the Go proclamation ahead. first? No, okay, read we'll read it first. Okay. All right, girls. Girl Scouts really helped me with my community skills and helping others in need. Girl Scouts also let me explore and visit new people. It also let me meet new people and friends. I also enjoyed going to Eversource for their Be That Engineer program because I like science. My favorite memory of Girl Scouts is visiting the jewelry jewelry warehouse. I loved learning about owning a business because that is something I might want to do when I grow up. I also love getting to know all of the girls and going horseback riding because I want to work with animals when I get older. I enjoyed being part of the Memorial Day Parade and feeling accomplished at helping the environment. These things made me feel special. I also really enjoyed when we went zip lining because it helped me explore different challenges to overcome. My favorite memory from Scouts is when we went horseback riding because it opened me up to a new experience that I've never done before. I enjoyed all the events in our town because Weatherfield is a special place. I also got to become friends with other girls from different schools. Thank you, girls. And here's the proclamation. Whereas Girl Scouts is recognized as a national leader in providing the best leadership development experience in the world for girls, and whereas Girl Scouts brings time-tested methods and research-backed programs that speak to the strengths of girl leadership development (coughs) backed by more than 100 years of experience and expertise in the field. And whereas, in Girl Scouts, girls develop their leadership potential through activities that enable them to discover their values, skills, and the world around them, connecting with others in a multicultural environment. And whereas, Girl Scouts is continuing a legacy of creating gender-balanced leadership in the United States and the world in its second century of service to girls by providing girls with the tools to become leaders dedicated to making this country and world a better place. 
And whereas Girl Scouts offers hands-on, girl-led, girl-certified learning in STEM, the outdoors, and entrepreneurship, and abundant opportunities to develop invaluable life skills, helping all girls take the lead early and often. And whereas the Girl Scout Gold Award is a one-of-a-kind opportunity and the highest honor a Girl Scout can earn, by engaging in leadership at the highest level and acknowledging each recipient's power and dedication to not only bettering herself, but to making the world a better place for others. And whereas Girl Scouts was founded in 1912 by Juliet Gordon Lowe, whose life mission was to build girls of courage, confidence, and character, and through her legacy continues to have an extraordinary influence on the lives of millions of girls across the country. And whereas today more than 50 million American women are Girl Scout alumni and 2.6 million girls and adult volunteers are active members. Now therefore, on behalf of the Town Council, I, Amy Morinbello, as Mayor of Wethersfield, hereunto applaud the Girl Scout movement and Girl Scouts of Connecticut and recognize March 12, 2018 as celebrating Girl Scout Day and the importance of girls' leadership development and hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this fifth day of March, 2018. There's your proclamation. And I'm happy to give this to you because <clears throat> I was a Girl Scout and then I was also a Girl Scout leader. So I'm happy to be part of the Girl Scouts. There you are. Thank you. Okay, in our next order of business, we're going to move the presentation of the Great Elm um, up and have that next. And we have Mark Trahan here to give that presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Mark Trahan. Uh, I am the chairman of the EDIC, the Economic Development and Improvement Commission. And tonight we're focusing on the eye of EDIC on the improvement side. Uh, we've been working over the last year on some initiatives at EDIC uh, to help the community of Wethersfield. And we'd like to share with you tonight the Great Elm, uh, which uh, will give you um, the Reader's Digest version and, or kind of the highlight reel, if you will, of the program and then open up if you have any questions regarding uh, this new site. So welcome to the Great Elm. Um, in essence, the Great Elm uh, has been designed to do really one thing, and that's to help the people of Wethersfield um, have a better experience with regards to the things that can be offered uh, in the town. Um, the goal of the Great Elm, very simply, is to make life easier uh, for the community. And we do that by providing a one-stop information hub of anything that is Wethersfield. Um, anything that touches Wethersfield, be it the Girl Scouts who just left, which is one of the people or one of the groups that we want to contact, um, to anything that's going on in the chamber and everything in between, anything that a consumer or a taxpayer in the town of Wethersfield that uh, may be interested in is going to be featured on this site. And how do we do this? We do this with what we call a living calendar. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys a quick tour in just a moment. Um, the calendar, I think, is probably going to be the most robust uh, section of the website. Um, the calendar basically, and when we say living calendar, is a calendar that um, is going to be updated on a daily basis on any type of events that are going on in town. And again, I'll give you a quick peek on that. Also, um, it has an in-depth listing area, which has clubs, groups, um, the town council is listed there. Anything, uh, any association, club, group, religious, uh, religious organization is also featured on the site as well. Um, and uh, it's extremely search-friendly site. Um, which we'll show you as well. Um, these are some early wins that we've had for the Great Elm so far, which have really been great. We've only been up on the uh, net or the web for I should say, a little over 35 days. Um, 
When searched on Google, we were listed in the third position on the first page. Uh, 30 days ago, we were at the very bottom of page two, and this is pure organic growth. Uh, which means uh, people that are already utilizing the site, they're hitting the site. Uh, the more you update a site, the more people visit the site, the higher and quicker you move up in the ranks. And frankly, to move up, I think, 20 positions in, a, in 30 days is pretty her Herculean. We said we were going to have some great orga organic, uh, organic growth. Um, we've got um, some good fertilizer in it so far. It is growing really quickly. Um, we have over 20 organizations already posting events on the calendar, which again, I'll share with you in a moment. Um, we have over 100 organizations listed with key contact information. Um, and when we talk about making uh, it easier, this is for the mom who just moves into town that wants to get information on a PTO. Um, this is for um, um, a mom or a dad that's looking to enroll their daughter in the Girl Scouts. We like to have a Girl Scout presence on the site. It literally is going to be a, a one-stop um, shop, if you will, on, on any type of data that the town of Wethersfield and, and their citizens would like to have. It also distinguishes Wethersfield different, uh, differently from surrounding communities. Um, we checked around our competing towns, if you will, uh, that are looking to have people move there or open businesses there, and there are no town, there are no sites like the one that we have that we've designed in really any of the towns that we looked at. We looked at a bunch, um, and I think once you see it, if you haven't seen it, you'll see it's really unique, and it really, again, is geared specifically towards um, the resident of Wethersfield. It's not um, business, it's not, the, although the business side of the community is something we like to get on the site, it literally is just anything a family would be interested in, uh, anywhere from what, what's going on this weekend in town, what can we go and support, or maybe what's um, available at the high school, again, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, the site is viewed, um, again, we've only been on for 35 days, but I've been in a couple of social environments over the last few weeks, and people have come up already and said that they've attended events um, that they did not know of uh, that they saw on the Great Elm. Um, there's been some events, some fundraisers that went up, um, uh, some uh, without naming names, but uh, where you would get kind of the same crew at the fundraiser every year. They got a bunch of new faces because they saw it on the Great Elm. So it's already starting uh, to have it, the effect that the EDIC thought it would have. Um, the Great Elm is a work in progress. Um, it is not perfect uh, yet. Um, you know, we're going to strive to make it as good as we can every single day. Um, but we expect to have glitches with it at times and whatnot. But for the most part, um, this is a living, breathing, growing uh, thing that I think over the next year, people will come forward and say, hey, could you try this or could you do this or could you add something or delete something? So it is a work in progress. Um, the, this is the first initiative of this type that the EDIC has done. Uh, it is kind of cutting edge, so we're, we're really excited about uh, what it can do for the town. But we want the commission, uh, excuse me, the council to understand that the commission is new to this. Um, but uh, we, I think, uh, based on what we're going to show you, we've done a pretty good job, I think, so far. So, if you want to laugh with the chief of police uh, shortly, you can go to the Great Elm. Uh, if you want to know when the upcoming fireworks are, um, you can go to the Great Elm. If you have a fundraiser that you want to promote, you'll be able to go to the Great Elm for that information. If you're looking for info on our schools, you'll be able to go to the Great Elm. And do you want to know if there's a fiddler on the roof? You'll be able to go to the Great Elm, and I'll explain this stuff to you in a second. So let's take a quick tour, if we could. Uh, barring any technical glitches, like that one. We'll take a shortcut. So this is the home page uh, of the Great Elm. And you'll see at the very top here, hopefully you guys can see it. Can you see it OK on your side? Great. Um, basically, we talked a little bit about what is the Great Elm. Um, there's a nice little bio here on how, how we came to name the site, the Great Elm site. Um, the Great Elm actually was the largest uh, elm tree uh, in the United States. Uh, it was right here in Old Wethersfield. Um, and people came from around the world to actually see the Great Elm. And it became kind of a spot where people would gather. And that's kind of what our concept is for this site, is that people will gather around the Great Elm website uh, and get some great information. And if you go under live, we'll just say if we start and just go into education and schools, just to give you an idea on some of the information that's available here. 
Here under Education and School is a one-stop shop of anything you'd need to know with regards to the Board of Education, um, the public schools, their websites, um, PACs and, and PT, uh, PTA uh, and uh, affiliations and their emails. Everything is right here under education and it's very well done. Uh, we've, we've proofed it several different times so we think we've got pretty good information here which is great. Um, also it, with regards to um, and if you look on all the items we have clubs and groups here, health and fitness, um, we would encourage you to go to the Great Elm and just take a look at the site and you'll see many of the different uh, items that are featured here along with websites and phone numbers because there are kids that might want to join the Colonel John Chester Fife and Drum but have no idea. And the beauty of the site is that in our search engine you'll be able to just Google the word Fife or the word Chester. So if you know just a little bit about what you're looking for, the site is very intelligent in the way it searches and you'll be able to dig up some great information uh, very quickly. Um, so I'd like to go to the calendar section for a moment. And I'm going to search here just for the word Fiddler. So if you knew that Fiddler was something, the Fiddler on the Roof was a play that was coming in town, you just would hit Fiddler and it would bring up uh, the item here that Westville High School probably presents Fiddler on the Roof. And the beauty about this is that it also gives cust uh, potential people information on how to buy tickets um, and how to promote the event. There's a lot of uh, events in town um, and the really part of the reason why we started the, the Great Elm is that I can't tell you how many times I would talk to people and I would ask them what did you do this past weekend and they'd say I went to this event and I go geez I didn't know that that the event took place or vice versa I would tell the people something that I went to I went to the Unico macaroni dinner and they go you know I've been meaning to go to that but I never can you know never remember when that is this is something that if people have any questions on any of these things that come up they'll be able to quickly uh, get there um, if we wanted, again, from, I'd like to go to the calendar section real quick here and show you the calendar. This, again, is probably going to be the most robust part of the site because it, it literally is being updated on a daily basis. And as I said before, if you wanted to, to have a chuckle with the chief of police, you'd be able to look at this calendar and be able to see all the different things that are going on uh, at this point in the town of Wethersfield. And again, of all the organizations that we have, we only have 20 organizations that are beginning to post information. So it's very, very early on, but already we've got a lot of great info. And once you click on, on this particular event, it will tell you that it's being sponsored by Unico, um, uh, what the venue, where the venue is, who it's going to support, um, et cetera. Um, as an aside, uh, the site was developed by a town uh, resident. Her name is Diana Stutz. Uh, she is a business owner here in town um, and uh, a mom and has kids, and she was instrumental in designing our website. <coughs> Diana did a great job. I also want to recognize Marco Pace, who serves on the EDIC with us, who is a uh, guru when it comes to this type of thing. We're very lucky to have him uh, on the commission, and he'll be uh, responsible for uh, some future innovation on the site as we go forward. Um, where we need help really is uh, promotion on the site. Um, we've, we, um, and I'd like to thank the town manager for, for seeing the vision on this and, and investing in this um, particular um, uh, innovation. But we have, from a marketing perspective, we're very limited on what we have budgetarily. Uh, and uh, all the stuff that you see, um, there's about 100 different calendar postings. All those have started by grassroots. We, we got some nice press. Uh, from uh, Weathersfield Life, which was great. Uh, we think that this uh, event tonight, us uh, presenting this to you, will help us get the, the word out there as well. But our ears are wide open. Um, anything that the, that the council uh, can think about uh, with regards to how we can promote this, um, our ears, again, are, are wide open. We are going to begin to uh, get our logo out, the Great Elm logo, out and website to all the organizations. Uh, that are listed on the site to make sure that we become part of their POS material, that they see our Great Elm logo with the Great Elm site. So if a PTO begins to use our site and they do a handout for their kids, we want them to put in that handout. Um, uh, for more information, visit the Great Elm. And we think from a grassroots perspective, this can spread um, very, very quickly. Um, so thank you, um, uh, Mayor Morin Bello. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Commission members. Again, thank you, Town Manager, uh, for uh, allowing me some time to share this with you. Uh, do you have any questions? Ms. Latina? Do you guys have a Facebook page? Um, we are addressing um, social media. Uh, we think that's something that should be explored. Um, we're working with the Town Manager uh, on that to make sure that if we get involved with that, we do it in a responsible uh, fashion. 
Uh, but we think from a press perspective, that's something we need to strongly consider. But we, if we do it, we want to make sure we're doing it the right way. This is the first time I'm hearing of it. I think it's fabulous. But again, that might help boost your I, reach. I couldn't agree with you more. <clears throat> Absolutely. Mark, thank you for coming tonight. I think this, uh, this idea is great. Um, and I've been on the website, and there's a lot of valuable information. Um, I would agree with, with Jody that social media is powerful. And even if we can get the, um, the Weathersfield Police Department Facebook page, the fire department has a page, maybe we can get this information out to some of those Facebook pages as well and mm -hmm. definitely work with the, the PTOs. They're, they're powerful, and they send out a lot of email blasts. So if we can get something sent out through the schools, that's a great way to <clears throat> disseminate information. I agree. If we can just figure out a way to, that that handout gets from the kids' backpack into the house, because it seems to get lost at one point. They don't, I don't know even do paper anymore. It's all email I now. love it. <laughs> Technology. Anything else? Um, Mark, uh, I, I also went online before did today's presentation. Take a look at it. Excellent Great. job. Thank you. My, my business uses uh, from the research department out of West Hartford for sort of hyper-local hyper um, distribution and finding ways under a certain con budget constraint in order to get... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, I always forget this. I get yelled at every time. I apologize. It's my fault. Um, in order to get out there uh, for you know whatever business venture that you particularly have, mine is a law firm. It's got a certain type of reach and certain type of implications. This obviously has a different type of goal. But um, there are small businesses for small budgets to, um, and I'll be happy to put you in contact with a few people that I know for Please. what it's worth or, or not. Um, in order to take this to the next level and say, okay, we've got a good product now, but now we need to have it work for us, so to speak. And he's got tons of strategies, low-budget strategies, in order to get to the goal that you want to get to. Great. Happy Thank to you. talk to you after. Send me an email or whatever you need to do. Great. Thank you, Council. Yep. I just, this is great. I think this is excellent. Um, I just have a question. When you submit events, it goes through. So anyone could who sponsors an event or a fundraiser can put that on there, and the, you probably review it or whatever. But it ends up on the calendar, which is just so easy, so much easier than, you know, having to submit it to the newspaper and all that stuff. So, I think you bring up a good point. There is a, a firewall on on uh, nobody can just post directly. We do have a webmaster that is between the community and the website. And if there's anything that seems a little bit goofy or maybe out of line, we would run it through and make sure that it, it, it fits kind of the, the parameters and what it would take to be on there. This doesn't allow, if you were going to have a barbecue at your house, we can't post a personal event. Not that we wouldn't like to go to it, but um, it, we can't post personal events to the site, but just um, uh, uh, community, community type, type yeah. events, correct. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Bell. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that brings up political events, maybe not a personal barbecue in the backyard, but, you know, does the webmaster <clears throat> curtail any political events going up on there? I, I think anything that educates the public on, a, uh, on an event, um, uh, if it's a fundraiser, I think would be something that would be suitable for the site. I, I'm, I'm a person of one, um, so we would take that, I think, to the town manager and to other places, but if it's something that's the betterment of the community, uh, I think that's something that we would take under consideration. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other Good. questions? Oh, Councilor Latina? I'm sorry. I just really quickly looked at our town calendar, and so there are specific <coughs> things that the town promotes. Is there any way to link the calendar so that you can kind of shuttle people back and forth so they know what, like, the historical society or the mayor's coffee or what have you? Yes. Um, I spoke with the mayor regarding that and getting that event up on the site. That can be individual um, entries, but they're, what we'd like to do and what we can do um, from migrating information from the town site to this site um, poses some complications, um, but we're, which we're looking at right now. Um, I think the idea, if we could shift a lot of the important information on the town site onto the Great Elm site, that would be beneficial so you don't have to go back and forth, or we can just drive people to the town site. Whatever, as I said, that whatever that number of slide was, we're still a work in progress. So some of the items that you guys are talking about I think are things that are on our burners. We just need to coordinate the burner and how quick we get to them. But I, if we could get to a point where we can provide information in one spot, that's kind of the idea here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mark, thank you again for coming out Great. tonight. Thank you Appreciate for your time. Yep, thank you. We have no hearings tonight, so we will move into general comment. The public.
five minutes to speak um, on any topic. Do we have any member of the public who would like to speak? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Good evening, Gas Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Here we go again. Uh, last week I had a chance to talk with uh, a police officer in town and uh, I asked the question and I told him, says, I live on Morrison Avenue. There are uh, stop signs on Morrison Avenue. He says, uh, who controls them? And he told me, he says, the stop sign on Morrison Avenue in the Silas Dean, it's the state. The other stop signs, west of that, it belongs to the town, and they control it. <clears throat> now, let me look back last year sometimes when uh, the previous mayor gave me a lecture. He said a lot of words, but he didn't tell me anything. And I'm going to quote. Uh, the council has been asked and answered and more than a few times, and he would maintain, or at least suggest, that maybe he does not like our answer, but that does not mean we have not answered the question or that we don't care. He has said this before. The council does not have the authority to authorize the placement of any stop signs. By charter, the council does not have that power, and he, as the mayor cannot go there in the middle of the night and plant a stop sign so he can stop listening to my topic again. A few lines down, it says, it is the state's prerogative <coughs> to make that decision. And this report has been reviewed and examined by our local police with the state agency. And contrary to Mr. Colantonio, that basically the council doesn't care. Uh, another thing, a few, few lines down, it says that, uh, but there is nothing that this elected body can do about that stop sign on Morrison Avenue. It is what it is, and in fact, the reports that were professionally presented by the town manager reiterate that there is not safety issue on Morrison Avenue. So I am still confused. Those stop signs are controlled by the town or controlled by the state? When I'm right here, they tell me that it's the state. When I go to the police department, it says, no, it's the town. And what it bothers me about this, that something is wrong, because when, when the mayor spoke, the town manager was sitting next to him. Obviously, the mayor was not, he did not know what he was doing or he was saying because the police is telling me that it's not up to the state, but it's up to the town officials. Which one is it? Is it the towns or is it the state? <clears throat> Another thing too, few, uh, I guess, you know, last year sometimes, I, I did request uh, basically uh, uh, any correspondence uh, between uh, the city the town and, uh, and the police department regarding uh, the new intersection on uh, the new, the modified intersection on uh, Tifton and Morrison Avenue. I asked the officer again, he did not give me an answer because he didn't really know about it, but anyway. And I also asked for a simple message, for a simple statement by the town engineer saying that the intersection of Tifton and Morrison Avenue, it's safe. How long do I have to wait before I get that statement? It should be so simple. He has the same information that I do. I still have 59 seconds. I give it to Bob Young. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young, come on up. <clears throat> uh, 
Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. The discussion on the uh, Great Elm was interesting. Uh, I did read something in the paper regarding it, but of course, uh, I didn't get all of what this man was talking, Mark was talking about, but uh, it's interesting. Uh, and and I'm, I'm also looking at it that this is a good, maybe a, first of all, I might have a few questions like who finances this? Hopefully somebody will answer that. Uh, obviously his website is not connected to the town of Weathersfield. He's on his own, whatever they go on, his own system. Um, and he did talk about in information coming to and from or more from the town onto his website. And I would like to suggest that we put our daily checkbook on that website. Obviously, I've talked about this in the past. Uh, nothing has happened. But I think a daily checkbook, he said he, it can be updated every day. We should be able to see all the checks that are cut, all the checks, not just the town and the board, but there's more checks or more accounts that has checkbooks. And I think we should be able to see that on a regular basis. And at least it would inform us, as Mark has talked about, um, this is gonna give a better experience to the people of Weathersfield. I think this would be a heck of a good experience for them to look at the, how the checks are cut and how the dollars are and where they all go. And I would think that would be an easy process. Next. At the last town council meeting and a number of earlier town council <coughs> meetings, you've had a lot of discussion regarding fracking, waste, band, band ordinance. And um, I, 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 I can't recall the last time I saw so many articles in the paper about a situation. I mean, maybe, maybe the high school might have surpassed, but fracking had one after the other of articles out there. And to me, we had state law. I don't believe we need it anymore. But I believe it was made into a, a diversion. We have very serious problems in this town and in this state. And I believe Mr. Spinella had made the comment that he voted for it just to move on. I guess after I sat here and listened to this all, all this while, I probably would have voted for it too, just to move on, maybe. Because to me, it was nothing but a diversion and, and uh, more theater that we don't need. We need to get into our business. <coughs> and as we get into our business, I, I have been talking to you folks about the um, Standish House lease and how it was put together 10 years ago. Uh, Mr. Mr. Forrest was one of the people that voted for it. I think it was a very poor, poor lease for the part on the part of the citizens of Weathersfield. I went back and I looked in the uh, Weathersfield planning and zoning to see what they had for minutes, and they had extremely little minutes about it. Uh, they called it, um, they said, review of the property lease for the Deming Standish House. And the next paragraph said, Commissioner Hamner suggested then made a motion to recommend that the town council work closely with the town attorney to ensure that the document protects the town's interest to the greatest extent possible. You know, and then it was seconded by one of his members. And it was voted on, eight to one. Hamner, whoever that is, Phil Kleck, I, I recall him a long time ago, uh, Harley, Hughes, Jurassic, Homecki, Pirelli, Ockel, all voted for this. <clears throat> on, and there's so little in the record. Uh, Roberts voted nay against it. And I believe he's an attorney. And, I, and I'm glad at least an attorney, and I don't know these other people, but uh, in reading that, I'm, I'm glad at least somebody voted no for it. 
Matter of fact, a lot of other people should have voted no for it, especially attorneys like Mr. Forrest. So, you know, we're, we're stuck right now. And, and Madam, I, I also asked Your you- Your time is up. You have 30, minutes, 30, <clears throat> 30 seconds, seconds to complete. Madam, last time I asked you, did you go back and renegotiate? With the town, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Wethersfield Historic Society and change that rent of $100 annually closer to the 43000 that they get. I asked you that last time. Maybe you'll answer that later on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, sir. Hi, uh, Paul Milne, 52 Livingston Street in Wethersfield. Uh, I hate to get up here and complain, you know, that seems like the issue was complaining. But I did uh, mention to Jeff on my way, and I heard him on TCTIC this morning, and I wasn't aware of uh, the centuries of houses represented in Old Weathersfield. I thought that was a really great thing that he did for our town to say that. So what I wanted to make you aware of, um, complain about, whatever, it's funny Facebook came up tonight. It's um, become an issue on Facebook about the uh, parking lots up at the corner of Jordan Lane and Silas Dean not being maintained. I don't know if there's a simple solution for that. I'd like to find out if there's um, anything that can be done. Along the same lines, this was um, physical services does go around town, does do a good job does do a lot of things, I'm sure. I have to give them credit where credit is due. But when they don't do something and I, I see it and it's a problem, I feel I should at least mention it. At the corner of um, Prospect and Griswold, there was a gigantic piece of car plastic in the middle of that road, uh, a traffic hazard. Um, I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but I, I take the bus and use public transportation back to work. There was nothing I could do about it. It sat there for three days. My, my issue is I, I feel that town trucks and their daily trash pickups, I see the Jeep going around and they have a route and a schedule. They must have gone by that intersection at some point during the three days. The police must have gone by there. Something big like that happens and it, it just looks bad. It looks bad for them, it looks bad for us, as well as the parking lots. So if it's not policy, I would <coughs> hope that it could be some kind of policy with physical services if they find some huge thing in the middle of the road to stop and pick it up and get it out of the way. So I'm, I'm sorry to, to complain, but I, I think it's maybe something that we should think about to just promote safety. It was kind of kind of annoying. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Seeing nobody um, else to speak, we will close the public comment. Are there any council reports tonight? I Councilor just have, Spinella. Sure. We had a meeting in the Memorial Day Parade Committee uh, last week. The parade's going to be on May 28th at 9 a.m. We developed a uh, I think a loose theme of uh, members of the public safety community in Weathersfield who uh, served in the military. Um, so if, if anybody fits that category who would like to be involved, uh, you can reach out uh, to the Memorial Day Parade Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Breton. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to mention <coughs> I went to the library board meeting and they are having a book sale um, and taking books. So um, that's April 5th, 7th, and 8th. There's a book sale at the library and they're still accepting books, I believe. Thank you. Are there other council reports? Okay, moving into council comments. Any council comments? Okay. Um, seeing none, we will move into town manager's report. Um, there's a question this evening on the Great Elm that's financed by the EDIC. There's some money in there for uh, promotions and website uh, support, so that's where the funding for that comes from. Um, other than that, uh, I've, we've been sending you different uh, updates on the legislative process. Uh, we heard, or the, so uh, it's unlikely 
that there'll be any budget movement, state budget movement, until after April 15th uh, due to them trying to figure out, rightfully so, which people prepay taxes and which are waiting for the regular April 15th date. So uh, with an adjournment date of May 9th, um, that gives them a very short period of time after the revenue estimates are done after April 15th to May 9th. So we're not hearing they're going to push the budget, but it's going to be a quick turnaround after April 15th to get this done before adjournment. Um, so short session. Thank you. Town Clerk, do you have any communications? <coughs> no idea. Okay, thank you. Um, we have no, except, we have no uh, resignations or appointments to boards and commissions. We will move into other business. Purchase of software for the building, engineering, and planning departments. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve the purchase of municipality software for the town of Wethersfield. Second. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, several years ago, the town invested in a CROG product called View Permit, uh, which was the product of a solicitation to actually construct a piece of software for building departments and engineering departments. Uh, we purchased that with the, an expectation that it was going to do a lot of these things, and it was a relatively low cost at the time, but it has not performed as, uh, as expected. And as a result, Krog did another solicitation for a more robust package uh, for the member towns and came up with a package called Municity, which is uh, already developed and it would be tweaked, and it has been tweaked for Connecticut operations uh, and well-supported. So we're recommending that the town uh, dump the view permit <coughs> and go with Municity. There are funds available in the reserve fund uh, for this purchase in the first year of operations. Uh, so it has no budgetary impact over the view, per view permit product for next year. Um, and then uh, the town engineer has put together kind of a reason to consider municipal software sheet. It does handle engineering permits, building permits, code enforcement tracking, zoning board of appeals. Uh, it interfaces with the fire marshal software. And it does have a mobile uh, capability so inspections in the field can be recorded uh, out in the field. Uh, which was the expectation of the view permit product, which never really materialized. So we would ask that you authorize that permit purchase. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing no questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, B3B, Selection of Consultant for Small Cities Community Development Block Grant. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Uh, I move to retain community consulting as grant administrator for the 2018 Small Cities Community, community Development Block Grant application and project and for the administration of the program income reuse plan. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, in working with the um, Housing Authority, as you can see in the agenda packet item, since 2010, we've worked with the Housing Authority to secure these types of grants, over $2.4 million worth, to renovate the Housing Authority properties, um, which had not been substantially uh, modified or uh, enhanced since the 1970s. So working with Cape Force here, we put together a, a project or a program where we would apply on their behalf since the housing authority cannot be a direct grantee we would apply in their stead and be a, a pass-through for them and we've done that successfully for prior times uh, the housing authority again is requesting that we uh, apply for another grant this one eight hundred thousand dollars for improvements to high view terrace apartments um, and the program income section is uh, in the past the town has undertaken housing rehab loans which are zero interest loans that are paid off or paid back to the town when the property is uh, sold or the owner redeems uh, the, the loan and that money comes back to the town and we have to reuse that for housing purposes. So the dollar value of that gets uh, included in what we offer the Housing Authority for improvements since we no longer do housing rehab loans. Um, and that's the program in so income side. So we would apply for the grant and then authorize the reuse of the program income towards, again, additional improvements to the Housing Authority properties. 
uh, community, uh, we are required to have a, a certified administrator, uh, community development or uh, community Consulting. consulting has done the last four, three of these and has done well. Uh, the committee met and <coughs> is recommending to go forward with them again. All costs are paid for out of the grant or by the housing authority. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor Rowe. Just looking at the um, proposal, there are um, suggestions to redo the kitchens, kitchen cabinets, abatements, and one thing is um, toilets and bathrooms. Energy efficient, anything going in energy efficient? Are we looking at uh, possible savings in the uh, uh, future by putting in uh, you know, low flow toilets, um, LED lighting or anything like that? I, I believe so. I think they are looking at the, the most recent building codes require low flow toilets, um, energy efficient appliances, those kind of things. Right. So not only would we see the improvements right now, but we would see you know, cost savings in the future. The housing Both authority would. We don't. Well, we don't yes. fund the utilities. Yeah. Yep. The housing authority would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Thank Great. you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Okay. The motion passes. Item B three C. The Wethersfield High School project change order. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve change order 0972 with Davis Ulmer in the amount of $31,528.91 for the Wethersfield High School renovation project. Second. Okay. Town manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. As we work through the 23 separate contracts for closeout, which we have about eight left to close out, uh, Davis Ulmer Sprinkler had a series of requested change orders which were outstanding through the project, roughly between sixty and $80,000. <coughs> In order to close uh, out their contract, a series of meetings took place between uh, the owner and Davis Ulmer to review each one of the proposed change orders and see which ones, um, based upon the history of the work, whether it's time material, whether there was value added to the project, whether it was out of scope and so forth, the own, uh, building committee in Davis Homer recommended of that roughly $80,000 that the uh, committee would pay 31528 to resolve our, all outstanding change orders with Davis Homer and close out their contract. So that is a recommendation of the building committee. Thank you. Are there any questions? So, Latina? So, seven more of these to go. Uh, you may not see them. We've closed, you know, over a dozen without having to come back to council. Why are we seeing this one? Because it, the change order amount is over what's authorized separately by the building committee or from our purchasing guidelines. What's the threshold? It's like $23,000. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. But that's why you're seeing this one. Thank you. We roughly have seven contracts out there. Um, our budget, we still have roughly $250,000 in the budget. Um, the iPads have been ordered and delivered. The understanding is that those would be deployed individually next year, next school year. Um, roughly the outstanding amount of change orders we're working through is less than $200,000, and we hope to close the rest of the projects by uh, the midsummer. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is bids. We have a bid for diesel fuel. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest? I move to accept a bid from Dime Oil for the diesel fuel for $2.5.46 for the 2018 2019 fiscal year. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, the town um, bids fuel through the Krog Purchasing Council. The bids were open last week. Uh, the proposed price, the lowest price was dime oil at $2.05 and a little bit for next year. This bid, yeah, yeah, a little no. bit. I had a, while I was moving the yeah. motion, I'm like 5.46. Yeah, 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 I didn't think about it. Very Two and a little bit. Right. Two and a little bit. Up from uh, 177 and probably a little bit on the end of that one, too. 
Um, uh, this fuel is used by the town, the fire department, um, and the school buses use this as well. So we're recommending accept the bid from Dime Oil for $2.0546. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor Hurley? We pay the school buses. Um, no, it gets yes. included in their budget. It does. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the Board of Ed gets told the amount and they factor it into their transportation cost. Any other questions? Councilor Forrest. Just a quick procedural question. I, I mean, I, I just was listening to you that we got a, the bid from a CROG bid. Mm -hmm. When is there a, sort of a decision made or a thought process? Because it was the only bid that we saw, so it's not like we saw like six or seven bids and, you know, we could sort of weigh that. Mm -hmm. So what's the thought process there about your, I guess, your recommendation that we should take the CROG bid versus we went out and sort of bid ourselves and then bounce it off of the CROG bid or the CROG got several people or when that CROG bid was done or that kind of procedural understanding about why this bid is better or worse than any other bid. CROG collects bids from many municipalities. So they're bidding, uh, you know, we, we bought 77,000 gallons. So they're bidding millions of gallons of fuel and they're locking in those, those quantities. Right. So it really makes no sense for us to bid it separately. We'd probably get the same price. You know, we've been using dime for years. Dime <coughs> seems to be the lowest. I guess, okay, uh, so what's your thought process about when, uh, you know, when the town would maybe enter into a, uh, maybe its own bidding, or when is it appropriate, or in your experience, when do you think, what's your recommendation for understanding when we go with a CROG bid, and maybe when we open up our own process, or <coughs> how we analyze whether the CROG bids are appropriate for our town, that kind of a thing, what's your? Well, I think, generally speaking, we use the collaborative bid process to get the best volume particularly on a commodity, you're gonna get the best pricing. Now, separate from that is we bid rock salt on our own because we've not had good experience with CROG vendors. So in the years where the CROG or CCM or the other consortiums had trouble getting salt, we actually bid and accept two prices from the lowest two salt vendors and use those. We didn't have as much trouble as on the CROG bid. Uh, so there are times we don't use it when we've had poor experiences, but we've not had those experiences with this vendor or with CROG uh, in oil or natural gas or electricity. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Rell. Not so much a question. I'm looking at <clears throat> the prices of $2.05. Um, $2.05 mm -hmm. uh, versus the... 177 and it did go up nearly 30 cents and just looking at AAA right now mm -hmm. if we didn't go price of diesel per gallon anywhere from two two nine four seven to two nine nine eight so um and a year ago average was 250 so off by 40 cents so it looks like it's i kind of i don't buy diesel but you know, looking at gas, gas has kind of stayed the same for the last 12 months, but diesel has jumped up 40 cents per gallon. So I think mm -hmm. we're getting a pretty good deal with dime, at least. I, I know we've used them in the past. I was kind of hesitant looking at a 20 some odd cent jump, but uh, it's uh, on par with what's going on nationally, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this bid begins July 1 and runs a year from July 1. No, it's very much prospective. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes. Uh, the next bid is for the vehicle purchases for police, physical services, and fire department. Do I have a motion? Yeah, motion to approve the purchase and disposal of vehicles for the police, physical services, and fire department as requested. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. As part of the 2018 budget, which has kind of been on hold, it's still we work through our state issues. Um, now that that's resolved, we're bringing these forward to purchase what was approved as part of the current year budget. Uh, these are all off the state bid. Um, in the police vehicles include all the necessary equipment to put them on the road as cruisers. Um, it'll, those, cruise, those cars will go through the police normal rotation. 
and the pickup trucks for physical services and the utility trucks will be deployed as those departments uh, utilize them. Thank you. Um, one question. Are we within the budget that we set? Uh, the pricing has gone up because of the delay, mm -hmm. um, but not substantially. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Councilor Latina. Just curious. I know that we're going to be taking up something about leasing. So why purchase these but lease the others? Uh, we are leasing these. The, it's the same vehicles. It's two motions for it's the two same motions. thing. We could have put it together, but we did the agenda item separately. Mike did the agenda item for the leases. I did the agenda item for the purchases. So the, Just trying to confuse everyone. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yes. had, I, mean, I think I got the, I same, the same question from the... <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, the same vehicles you're purchasing are the same vehicles subject to the next agenda item. Got it. Got it. Thanks. So it's seven, seven vehicles total. Total, not total. 14. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, there is right. one more for the building department, but that one we'll bring back, and that's cash. We have reserve. We put money away for that one in reserves. That'll be next. No. Okay. Got it. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. And now the lease for the vehicles. Do I have a motion? Motion to authorize the town manager to enter into a lease agreement with TD Equipment Financing for the financing of the purchase of rolling stock, including the fiscal year 18 CNAF budget. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, uh, the finance department did... Uh, did a bid on the uh, leasing for this for these vehicles. It is a three-year lease, and unlike a uh, a non-public lease, there is no residual. We would pay one-third the value of the car or the vehicle over the three years. At the end of the three years, we own it outright. There's nothing to pay the leasing company, um, and the interest rate is 2.66 percent for that three for those three years. Um, TD Bank is recommended. Although Santander Bank had a slightly lower overall rate, the cost of getting Santander um, put together in terms of the master lease agreement and having the town attorney review their lease documents and so forth would more than exceed the difference in the interest cost. Um, we do have a relationship with TD where it's kind of a revolving type of lease arrangement. So we're recommending TD. Okay, thank you. Um, I, did I also read that that Santander uh, rate was not locked in? Yeah, the, that was a shorter time frame for action than, than the TD. Thank you. Are there any other questions, any comments? Councilor Forrest? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, why, it sounds like the lease, if I, if I understand, there's a, the lease, it's really sort of a three-year loan, though, because we're going to own it at the end of the lease. Mm -hmm. But the lease, under a lease situation, the title is held by the bank rather than a, rather than a lien mm -hmm. and a loan. So why would we do it in one, why would we do it where the title is held by the bank, but we essentially get the cars after three years versus a loan where there's a lien on it and we own it during the three years? Is there a, is there a reason for the process difference? Yeah, um, there, there is. The lease allows us to do this type of financing. We don't really take out bank loans. Municipalities really don't do bank loans. So it's the same. So because it's called a lease, municipalities do leases, but it still f acts like a bank loan. It's a municipal lease. It's a product designed for municipalities. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but you're right. The leasing company does own the asset through the lease term. Is there any positives to that, or negatives to the other way? Or no, we ownership? we insure it. We maintain it. You know. If we wreck it, we pay for it. You know, our insurance covers it. So it's a, it's a financing vehicle. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Councilor Ralph? Is this the last of the Crown Vicks for the police department, or are there? There's a few more. Okay. So we're going to be seeing those in the next couple of years? Or well, are they the, newer than 2011? Uh, I don't know. I think... We had Crown Vicks up until 15, 14, 15, something like that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's still a few out there. Thanks. Councilor Latina? I don't know if this is a Scribner error, if it 
matters at all, but under budget source amount, it says fiscal year 19. Should it be fiscal year 18? Nope, there's no payment in this fiscal year. First so payment will be, be in 19. Next. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. We have um, three resolutions for introduction. They're on the agenda. Um, and then next item is the minutes of March 20th. Do I have a motion? Um, um, um. <laughs> motion to approve minutes of February 20th, 2018. Second. Okay, are there any um, additions, deletions, or corrections? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Abstain. Thank you. Motion passes. That was a quick, quick meeting so far. Um, <laughs> we will move, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, back into public comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak? <coughs> Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I share the pain with you, sir. Uh, I, I've been right here for, since 1973. I think it's 45 years. And I determined that not everybody does care for the town of Wethersfield or not everybody has accountability. Not too long ago, they, uh, they did remove some uh, old guide railing on Marsh Street. And uh, I guess, you know, what we call it, a, a cable and anchorage was sticking up there for many years until I said something, and uh, two or three days later it was removed. This is, this is only a few hundred yards away from the, the city yard. Don't tell me that the police or anybody else have most seen what I saw, but it never got fixed. Some other, it's, and it's not the only place, so I, I feel the pain with you. Since I, I asked the question basically uh, for the town engineer to give me an answer if it's safe or not, just for his own information and your, the town manager information, that uh, the last intersection site distance as, as measured by the town at the intersection of Orchard and Morrison Avenue it's 232 feet. 232 feet. I got a chart right here that it shows the intersection side distance and the design speed that it's, it's good for. For 20 miles per hour, the, the, the intersection side distance for a passenger car should be 225 feet. 20 miles per hour, 225 feet. 25 should be 280. Pleasure. Pleasure. Now, obviously, 232, it doesn't meet the 25 posted speed limit. And the 31 miles per hour, the 85th percentile that people go by there. So now he has all the information. And probably the next few meetings, I hope that I can get an answer from him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Good evening, Tom Azzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I just wanted to uh, uh, advise everybody that there's a uh, public hearing tomorrow night in this chamber, planning and zoning on a proposed ordinance to allow for a uh, dispensary of uh, medical marijuana in the Silestein Highway, a section of the Silestein Highway. Uh, I don't think Weathersfield needs that. And uh, I think if you uh, approve an ordinance that allows for the dispensary and state law changes sometime in the future, uh, that those approved sites will uh, likely become legal dispensaries of uh, marijuana to the public. 
So I'd urge everybody to uh, attend the meeting tomorrow night, get up and voice your opinion. Uh, unless you're for it, then I hope you stay home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. <laughs> Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young. Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. And I did see that article or something about that medical marijuana presentation that's going on t tomorrow night. Um, tonight, we've, we've talked about money. I've talked about money. You folks have talked about money. And you know, I just don't understand how we, we operate, the way we operate. <clears throat> Tonight, we're buying more automobiles on lease plan. We, we don't have the money to buy them. We probably never will have the money to buy them going forward. This will always become an eternal life program for the town of Wethersfield and probably many other towns. They live way beyond their means. We see that with the high school. Umpteen dollars. I don't know how many dollars we're going to be spending on that thing for so many decades. We lose money. We lose money on the Standish House, <coughs> something that we should be getting $43,000 a year for. Instead, it's going somewhere else. And that organization is giving us a measly $100 a year. And I think we have Mr. Forrest to think, thank for that. I believe the uh, manager mentioned that the Chromebooks are in. Another, another purchase on lease payments. And I think Mr. Rell was the one that brought up the idea of let's go for the Chromebooks on leasing, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And, you know, we buy equipment on lease payments. And it just keeps going. Fire engines on lease payments or some kind of payment plan. We can't afford this stuff. But we can somehow commit ourselves to the, to the dollars that will be needed later. And it becomes a fixed cost. A cost that nobody disputes at the council level because it's fixed and it has to be in the budget. It's a forced way of doing business. And as a citizen of this town, and I've been a citizen for a long time, I resent this idea of doing business this way. It wasn't long ago our, our gracious Board of Education decided they needed a transition academy. They selected a couple spots, or it took a couple spots for them to figure out where they're going to be. And now it costs us $4,500 a month. $4,500 a month. And while they were talking about that, the citizens were asking for an elevator in the same building that we were going to rent. That'll eventually happen if there's ever any more money. Mr. Forrest, you were part of that as well on, when you were on the Board of Education. You know, we've entrusted you, Mr. Forrest, in, in a lot of things, and you've let us down. You might have let other ones up, but in my case, you let me down. We continue to see this kind of spending going on. You folks only get 30% of the, citizens, the, the voters to come out to vote for you. You know, we saw that five, what was it, the five to three at the last time, last meeting regarding fracking. And when you start looking at five to three against 30% of the votes that you accumulated, you only got 15 or 18% of the population when you start thinking of it head count wise. That's all you got for your fracking ordinance. A fracking ordinance that all it's going to take 
is one politician with a lot of muscle to walk in here and it will just go up in smoke and his business would open up, taking care of fracking, informa fracking materials because that's how politics is. Instead, the citizens had to put up with weeks and months of theater from you folks as you let this thing drag on that was worth not much, but you got a success. A success, and now tonight you're, you're, you, you, you did a, accepted a bid for diesel fuel. You know, 77,000 gallons you bought last year. You know, if you would have turned, turned the spigot off, you'd send out a heck of a message back to the oil companies not to do fracking. Okay, wrap it up, Mr. Yes, I'm wrapping it up, Thank madam. You. you know, and, and I hope to hear from you at the next meeting about did you get, what kind of a deal you got with the Weathersfield Historic Society on their rent. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the public who'd like to speak? Okay, seeing none, before I ask for a motion for executive session, I did want to mention that um, the DOT is having an information session on the Ridge Road Bridge Rehab on March 14th at 6.30 in Town Hall for residents who are interested in that. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the meeting. Um, now I'll entertain a motion to move into executive session. I'd like to move into exe executive session. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We're going to stay in here since the BAA is still working in the other room, so we'll stay in here. Thank you. So take a few minutes and clear the gallery. Clear the gallery. I, tried, I can't do anything right now. Helping kids with disabilities, making sure we preserve our town heritage. I'm, I'm a home person. Making sure we have a revenue stream for people to take care of. Yeah. Making sure we're the oldest town in the whole state. Talk to them about it just to see how it goes. What's that? Still on.